All right, so in this compartment here is your generator. Um, it's currently locked. There isn't really any need to get in there. Um, I'll go inside and I'll show you how to turn it on. But uh, it locks with the key if you do for some reason need to get to it. But it has uh, oil that's recently been oil changed, so that should be good. Just one thing to note, the uh, automatic step doesn't come out. So we just built this step and um, just make sure you put it in and out um, when you're done with it. And we usually set it upside down inside here um, just for storage as you're going down the road. All right, this, this is your control panel here. Here's your lights. And this is how you start the generator. You wanna hit down here where it says prime. You hold that down just for a few seconds and then hold that till it starts and there's your hours which have already been recorded and you can let that run and then you turn it off. So with the generator running all the electronics within the RV uh, will be functional but there's really no need to run it if you are plugged into shore power, uh, if you're plugged in at a campsite using the plug underneath. And then when you're driving, there are inverters in both the front and the back of the RV that will be powered off the engine. So um, there isn't really any real need to run the generator um, unless you're dry camping and you wanna run it to run the microwave or something like that. But there's no real need to run the generator. The generator won't run if the gas tank is below a quarter of a tank as well. So there's kind of a safety if it's running and you run below a quarter of a tank, it will cut off um, until you get more gas. So storage while traveling is the next thing on the list. Um, just, you know, uh, all the cabinets that are above here and here all have latches on them. You want to make sure that the, the bathroom's doors are latched. Just go through, kind of go front to back, and just touch everything, make sure it's latched. You don't want to stack anything up on the kitchen counter that could fall over. Um, we like to just kind of stack things on the bed, kind of one level, um, and that'll, you know, just keep it uh, from anything from tipping over. And then above the, this is a thing you want to make. Let's get up closer on this. Um, <coughs> Up here, if you're um, maybe charging a iPhone or you have a, you know, a, a PlayStation or a Switch or something up here, make sure that's secure because this will rattle and it can fall down and hit someone's head. So just make sure if there's anything up here that it is secure um, or just don't store anything up here or up here because you don't want it to rattle out um, while someone's driving. So just be aware of that. So these are your slide out controls. This is the passenger side slide out and your um, driver side slide out. You wanna do them one at a time. And all you do is you just hit out and you hold it. And you can see it slide down here now. And it takes about maybe 15 or 20 seconds. You'll hear it click. Once you hear the click, you wanna stop. And you just let off. And the same thing for in, is you just hold it in as it comes in. Uh, a couple things to note in the slide outs is when you're sliding out, just make sure that um, around the outside of the RV, there's no trees or you don't have, you know, maybe a bike or something leaning up against it. And same thing when it's coming in, you just want to make sure the floor is clear of, you know, any clothes or luggage or anything like that. Um, so when they're coming in, also just be aware one little quirk is that the cover, this cover sometimes while driving will vibrate off and it's, it's happened once or twice, but just to be aware of it, um, this thing will vibrate off and it'll kind of lean. So when you're putting the slide out out, it'll get caught on this piece of trim. So just make sure all around is clear um, before you do the slide outs in and out. One more note about the slide outs is you don't want anyone sitting on it or having any luggage um, stacked up. You want these uh, clear of any extra weight when they're coming in, when they're coming out, just to protect the gears. But once they're out and once they're in, people can sit in them just fine. The next on our list is unit specific. 
The only thing you can really think of is just the entertainment system here. Uh, just to kind of walk you through it. Uh, this is your light uh, that kind of lights these. And then what you have is you have up here is you have a DC inverter. And what that does is that takes the power from the battery of the RV and allows you to charge your iPhone, uh, run uh, DVD player, PlayStation, any type of entertainment thing while you're driving. So all you do is you just you plug into here your 110 or your USB and you switch it on. Um, and right now the RV is not driving on so there would be a blue light that would come on. Oh wait it does. There's the blue light. You can kind of see it with your hand. So that's how you have power while you're going down the road and this will will run quite a bit so um, and then you have your your DVD player is here this is pretty self-explanatory you have your remote for your DVD player your remote for your television uh, this is just a, a little thing there uh, the satellite is disconnected you can't um, run a satellite or cable in here you just run DVD players or you can hook up uh, we have a HDMI cord so if you want to run a um, some sort of entertainment device off of that but uh, sometimes this happens randomly the satellite will kind of try to pick up a signal and this light will start flashing just hit the off button and then it'll turn that off so but that's the extent of that one more thing to note is you plug your like this uh, surge protector here has the television plugged into it. Uh, you plug this into the inverter when you're driving, and then you plug this into this wall unit if you're plugged into shore power, and uh, then you're not running off the truck battery. So just a little note on that. So for the couch, it's a jackknife sofa. You're gonna fill under here. There's a bar that you can feel and you're gonna just lift that up and then press down and then you have the bed. To put it back up, it's the same thing. You feel under for the bar, lift it up. You're gonna reach up here and pull it up and then set it down. The seat belts are behind here. You just have to reach under and then you can pull them up so then you can be buckled. This is a light for a little bit more brightness and then here, this is for privacy. You just want to use two hands to lift it up. And this is to give you a little bit of light. Um, for while you're going down the road, you can have them open, closed, um, or the privacy curtains closed. And then the windows just open like this. You just pull this section out here, and then you just pull it down. To change the table to a bed, the first thing you have to do is take out these cushions and then here you're going to move this lever over so that the back part is no longer in line with the brace and then you just press the table down until it's in place and secure. Then you'll take these cushions and lift them out of the braces. On both sides. And then slide these cushions into the center. On both sides of the table, there are drawers with storage. There's seat belts on this side and the wood underneath the cushions lifts up so you can pull those out. To put it back into a table, again, you'll remove the cushions. And the most important part is on the table, when you raise it, you want to make sure that the lever goes against the metal brace. So you want to make sure that the bracket goes into the metal brace.
for the seat belts on this side, this piece of wood just lifts up and then you can thread the seat belts right through these holes in the back. And then for the table, because of the mechanism that lifts it up and down, you don't want to stack heavy things on it. It really is just for eating and, you know, regular use. For the extra piece of counter here, you need to make sure that they are pulled out and then press down in order to latch it. Be very careful with this. Uh, it tends to fall if you aren't paying attention to the fact that it, if it's latched or not. And to put it back down, you just do the same thing. Lift it up and then pull the crankets in and then fold it down. For the sink, Once it's connected to water, you just have to open it up and let the air come out and then the water will run out um, and it should be fine with water pressure. If you are planning on using the tanks and filling them, you want to leave this open uh, to get the water running before you start filling it. However, we don't recommend having the tanks full because it makes the RV heavier and that's going to give you less gas mileage. For the storage, there's plenty of storage here. Uh, this paper here is directions on how to use the microwave and the convection oven and the high speed uh, oh, microwave, sorry, convection oven and half time oven. There are not anything in these cabinets currently. We do offer basic utensils, uh, pots and pans, cutting board. Uh, if you would like that, it definitely can be included. For the refrigerator, you want to make sure that the button is in so that it is on. And the light will come on here for it to be automatic. That way, if you are connected to shore power, it will automatically run off of electric. And if you are not, it will run off of gas. Even if you're unplugged while you're on your way to your destination, the fridge and freezer will still stay cool because it'll be running off of propane. So here is your bathroom. Uh, here's your toilet. Do your business in there. There's a foot pedal on the side, which you just step on that to flush. Currently the tank is empty uh, because it's winterized, but... Um, uh, if you were hooked up to water, it would flush just like your toilet at home. Be sure to use septic safe toilet paper. There's a couple rolls in here. And while you're driving down the road, uh, if you don't, if you're not connected to water, you can just use uh, one of these gallon jugs to rinse all your business down the toilet. So the, the bathroom just functions just like a bathroom would at home, but you have to be aware of your tanks uh, getting full with regular usage with about three to four people you're going to find the tanks are going to need to be emptied about every three days is what we find and I'll, i'm going to be going outside to make a video on how to do that later so same thing your showers in here it functions just like the shower at home but just be aware that the longer showers you take the quicker your tanks will fill and you'll know the tanks are filled when the drain stops working. So there is a sensor, but the sensor isn't very accurate. So just um, just be aware of that. You get about three days with average use um, before you have to empty your tanks. Again, this is your kind of control unit here. This uh, water heater, you switch that on and that runs off of the propane. And that's kind of an insta-hot, so that heats up really fast. So. You don't want to leave that on, but just, you know, a minute before you're going to use it, do that. This is your water pump. Again, if you're connected to city water, so if you're connected to the hose at your campsite, this isn't needed. Um, this is only if you're running off the tank, which again, if you're dry camping, that would be the only time you use that. So this isn't really needed. Um, this is your air conditioning unit here. Uh, this is a thermostat, just like at home. You have cool furnace, high, low, fan your thermostat here. Uh, again, this will run off of, uh, the air conditioning runs off electricity. 
So uh, you can just, if you're plugged in the short power, that will work. And then your heater runs off propane, so you don't need to be connected to anything because it'll just run off the propane tank. Um, and you want to use, we uh, have a fan in the back. The air conditioning uh, has a hard time getting back there, so we actually set up a fan in the back as well. But that's included, and that just keeps the air flowing for you. So back here is your bedroom with all your storage. Uh, these are reading lights that will work um, if you're plugged in the shore power. There's storage here. And then you have an inverter here. So if you're driving down uh, the road and you want to charge an iPhone or something like that, you can run off of that. Um, or you can plug the TV in with like a portable DVD player. And that will run off the inverter, uh, which is while you're driving. Um, also, your breaker panel is located under here. Just in case you need to know, the breaker panel is underneath the bed. And that has all your, your fuses. Any additional fuses are located in this drawer next to, the, next to the bed in case you do need them. Be aware that that is an air conditioning duct and a heating duct. So if you want to make sure heat and air conditioning is coming back here, not to have that blocked with any clothes or luggage. We have a smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector back here and also one up here. In the front. Okay, one last thing on the inside, or a few last things. We have vents here. You have one here. You have one in the bathroom, and then you have one in the uh, bedroom, and they just crank open. And there's a fan, just to kind of keep airflow going in here if it gets warm. Uh, make sure those are closed before you leave. Um, you don't want those open while you're driving down the road. And then lastly, your fire extinguisher is mounted down here for you. So uh, we do have a sheet that will be up uh, near the driver's seat that kind of gives you a checklist of what to do before you leave and when you get there just to make sure everything's buttoned up just so you don't forget anything. So we're gonna go outside and look at some of the stuff outside. So the next on the list is your hitch here. Uh, it's not approved by Outdoorsy and we don't approve you to tow a trailer or a boat or anything like that. But if you do have a bike rack, um, this would be your hitch to um, bring some bikes on that. But just be aware um, when you back up, uh, there is a backup camera up there, um, which is in the driver's seat. I'll show you that a little later. But the back camera, you just, just remember that when you're backing up that you have bikes behind you. So your tires are here. Um, we checked the tire pressure. Everything is good on that. You have two front tires and then you have a set of dualies in the back. So there's two wheels in the back. Uh, if you look in here, right here on the door shows your recommended tire pressure. So if you do seem like you're running a little low and you need to go to a gas station or something, um, that's just listed right here for your tires. Uh, they have been checked and they are up to pressure right now. Next on our list is fluids. Uh, the uh, oil change and the oil filter is up to date and the uh, windshield wiper fluid has been topped off. Next on the list is cleaning. Uh, inside in the bathroom underneath in the compartment is just a little dustpan and a broom just for you to, to keep it clean for yourself. You know, just, just sweep up whatever's um, dirt or mud that gets tracked through. Um, but we do ask that you return it in the same condition that it was um, borrowed in. So if there's just, you know, no major mess, we just ask that you kind of pick up any trash and, and clean up after that. Uh, so it's returned pretty close to normal. All right, last two things on the list are water hookup and power hookup. Most of that is back here. We'll just do a quick walk around too of the whole RV so you can see. But if you look in here, this is your power cord and it's currently connected to shore power. There is an adapter uh, depending on what voltage they have but this is coiled around here. This, so this tote here just has uh, some duct tape and tarps and extension cords that you might need here. Uh, in here you have your, this is your wire, uh, connection. And there's actually an opening here on the bottom. 
and I like to run the water or run the electricity out the bottom so that the way this this thing closed so you just run that out the bottom and you have about 15 feet of cord uh, that's about how close you want to get to the electricity at the campsite these are your hoses I have two hoses here these are white uh, hoses so these are good for uh, drinking water and, um, and taking a shower so this is your RV filter and it says flow so it goes that way so you want to go in this way and you set this up at the campsite you run this from the from the campsite water that just filters it just for drinking water and it also limits the pressure so if it's high pressure coming out of the city water hose it won't uh, affect anything here on the RV but so here's your hose this is your um, sewer pipe caterpillar thing so when you get to your campsite or wherever you're going to be stopping first you want to make sure when you're backing in or pulling in you have enough room on either side for your slide outs so you can see the slide outs there they come out you would give yourself about two foot to make sure the slide outs are clear you want to make sure your uh, most campsites your electricity and your sewer and water are right there together what I like to do is just get that all hooked up together. Um, you have your electricity, pull that out, plug that in. You get that plugged in first, so whoever's inside uh, working will have power to do the slide outs and watch TV or whatever they're doing inside. The next thing I do is the water. So you get your hose out, you connect it to the city water connection at the campsite or wherever you're at. And then there's a, there's a uh, thing right here city water connection you screw that on like that and you turn that on you open up one of the spigots inside to let the air clear out of the line and then you close that just leave the spigot on and whenever you need water inside uh, it'll be just like your tap at home okay so the last thing you want to do is you want to hook up your sewer pipe and you have this caterpillar thing here you want this going from high to low so the poop runs downhill like the old saying goes and then your sewer hose is here there's two different hoses sometimes you need one sometimes you need two depending on uh, how long it is to to where the drainage is uh, there are gloves in the driver's side door so I would put gloves on and grab that hook it into here, you open this up, you snap it on, it just turns on, makes it on there tight, and then you want it to run downhill into your into your drainage. This is your opening close closing of the valve. You leave this closed and after you know two days or three days or whatever, once it starts to fill up, you'll open that to let it out because you want the the uh, the pressure from it being filled helps it drain better so uh, you leave that closed until you're ready to drain it like I said usually it's every two or three days you want to drain it so you can't really see it but underneath here uh, this is on the passenger side there is a valve this is for the gray water so this is for your shower water your sink water um, anything that isn't toilet water and what you want to do is you want to open up your black water first and then you come around and you pull this side and this will actually because it's the gray water it's a little cleaner it'll actually flush out your um, your black water so I open up the black water open up your gray water once this is done draining close this go around and close that again you want to do that every two or three days uh, once your tanks start to fill up so that's the real quick and basic way of setting up your water and electricity and then when you're done at the campsite you want to do that all in reverse also we do have a checklist inside to make sure you go through all this stuff because you definitely don't want to pull away with it still being connected so I'm just gonna do a quick go around of all the external uh, storage places you have your sewer hose goes in here this is a little external shower if you want to hose off after the beach this is your hot water heater you shouldn't have to open that up 
under here is your generator this is also extra storage under here we usually just put like wetsuits or something that we don't care to bring inside um, towels or whatever go around here to the front on this side underneath you have your propane uh, you want to make sure that's off if you're going over um, sometime on ferries they make you turn it off if you go over to Delaware Memorial Bridge they make you turn it off um, if you have to turn it off they'll tell you but you just open it up turn it to close it these are other little additional storage spaces under there we try not to use them for anything um, they are watertight but I just don't like storing things under there just in case water just happens to get in there you don't want wet luggage this over here is an external speaker and an external plug so if you want to watch TV outside you can do that here is the underneath storage this goes all the way through to the other side there are lights in here that uh, you know, help you at night you can turn those on these are some wheel chocks if you are parked you know near a hill or something like that and you want to chalk the wheels just to feel a little more safe I've never really used them and again when you're done you want to just make sure you go around this is on your checklist but just go around make sure everything is latched everything is locked it needs to be locked you don't want these opening up while you're driving down the road all right we'll go over the list here the driving lesson you start the engine just like you start any car turn it it's not diesel so you don't have to uh prime it or anything start it up just like you would a car tornado watching effect on the radio there all right so left turns and right turns you want to make sure uh, you have your mirror, it has your blind spot here on the bottom, you know, turns here. Just make sure you're clear. Uh, you know, left turns, you want to make them a little bit wider. Right turns, you want to make pretty wide. Uh, rule of thumb is once the driver uh, is past where you want to turn, so the curb, that's when you want to start making your turn. So don't turn like you would a car to, to have the front of the car go around. You want to be passed as the driver, past the curb or whatever you're trying to clear and then make your turn. Just really be careful around uh, gas stations and parking lots because your turning is a little bit different. So just drive slow, use your mirrors. And when your little rule of thumb is when you're getting gas, go to the outside tank. The, uh, the gas tank is on this side. So you want to um, pull up on the driver's side and you want to be i usually give myself oh uh, there's gas station on that so uh reversing you have a backup camera you want to hit this top button sometimes it sticks a little bit it's a little squirrely so you might have to push it a couple times but you have a backup camera and that also has a microphone on there so if you have someone back there they can say five feet four feet whatever but use your backup camera if you need it and have someone if you're not real uh sure you know use someone back there to help you out appropriate speeds drive how you're comfortable um obviously you don't want to go super fast in you know residential areas and parking lots just drive safe um but you don't have to drive like a grandma on the highway you know once you get comfortable stay up to speed with the rest of the traffic um gas stations rule of thumb is you want to stay on the outside uh, uh gas station so Go to the outside pump. You don't want to get caught up in the middle. Give yourself about five feet. The The gas tank is on the driver's side. So just pull in. Give yourself four or five feet. Um, and you may take a little bit to, to get it lined up. But uh, what I found, if there's two pumps, if the driver is at the second pump or this pump, the second pump is going to be lined up with the gas tank but you might have to jump out and back up or go forward a little bit and then when you're leaving be really careful uh the back end you don't want to make the turns too tight because the back end will clip they have these like safety bumpers at all gas stations uh you will clip that so just be really careful turning in and turning out 
So uh, there's been gas stations that I've just left and gone to another one because there was just too many cars around. It was too trafficy. Um, so, you know, don't be don't be embarrassed if you have to go to a different pump or go to a different station. Uh, highway driving, we covered that. Just be aware of your blind spots. The bottom mirror is helpful uh, with that. Just when you're changing lanes and all that. Um, you shouldn't have any issues with clearance um, over overhangs. Uh, I think it's about 12 and a half feet. So, you know, definitely don't go into parking garages or anything like that because you're going to get jammed up both with height and length. But um, any overpasses or um, things like that, I wouldn't go through drive throughs like Chick-fil-A's, things like that, uh, because they're not they're not going to be high enough for you. Uh, residential roads, be aware of turning around. You can't just K-turn this like you would uh, a car or even a truck. You need to just be really aware if you're in a residential area and there's no, uh, there's a dead end or something, you're going to be backing out. So just be careful of that and just for, remember that you're in a bigger vehicle and you can't just, you know, pull into a driveway and do a K-turn. Um, and then parking. <clears throat> Again, I try to park just kind of farther away. If you're at a grocery store or a mall or something like that, uh, I will park far away and actually take up like four spots is what you're going to end up needing because of the width and the length. So you don't want to be a jerk and <laughs> park up front. So just park far away and, you know, just kind of take up four spots and just give yourself a walk around. Make sure you're not in the lane in the front or in the back um, until you get used to it. So I think that's it with driving. Just go slow, check your mirrors, get someone out to look for you if, 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 you, if need be. Uh, you're on vacation. There's no rush. So I'll play it safe. So hope you enjoy. So there is a cover to put in the window, in the front window for privacy. It has Velcro along the sides and the top. And then if you look here, there's Velcro tabs along the sides and the top. You do need to fold down the visors and you just start in the corner and then work your way around. And then that gives your family privacy so that the neighbors in the RV park aren't just looking in your windows at you.